Well, hello, everybody, and happy Halloween from the Grayscale Gorilla Podcast. With us, as always, we have uh, Chad the Gorilla. Hey, guys. <laughs> what? This, is, that how that, is this how this works? You're the gorilla today. Everybody's been wondering where the gorilla went. It's right you look, here. Dude, you look good, man. Uh, and, of course, we have uh, Chris Schmidt. How you, how you doing, Chris? Happy Halloween. Dude, that thing looks awesome, man. All right, you uh, you got to tell us more about this mask because I, I know you – did you make this thing for Halloween? I did, but it's – well, let's see. We'll see how the talking goes through the mask for a second. <laughs> it's a little tough. I may have to translate, but it looks – here's the thing. It looks great. Okay, I'm ditching the mask now. It is awesome. <laughs> Happy Halloween here from Grace Uh I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I didn't dress up. <laughs> I've got nothing good. I've got I've got a, a Michael Jackson uh, action figure, and we're just gonna hold him up. I think the whole time, and he'll do my talking for me. Um, happy Halloween, hat. Happy end of October, everybody. And uh, if you're new, if you're new to the Great Skill Girl podcast, wow, what do we do here? We talk about motion design. We talk about 3D. We talk about technology. We talk about the ways to become uh, better at motion design, and ultimately you know, get paid to do this stuff and make your best work. That's what we talk about all over the place. We talk about a little bit of everything here. And uh, today's going to be fun. We're going to do a Q&A from a live audience. Uh, the chat room is filling up right now. And if you're already watching, thanks for coming in. I'm going to get the chat room up here in just a second so I can personally say hi to some of you. Um, but uh, we're getting the chat room here from our GSG Connect, which if you've ever purchased any software training from Grayscale Gorilla, you have access to our behind the scenes Slack channel, which we call GSG Connect, where everyone's hanging out all the time, answering each other's questions, answering each other's what should I buy? Uh, and you know what 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 video card should I buy recently? And uh, and also you know answering Cinema 4D question, motion design questions. So if you have ever purchased anything from us, please go log into your customer account and sign up to the um, GSG Connect. We'd love to see you in there, um, guys. All right, how you doing, Chad? Are you warm in there? Are Dude, I'm gonna good? have to take this off and like, I'm gonna suffocate in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's yeah. it's like it's one of those things that sounds like a good <laughs> idea until you put it on and you're like you wear glasses for those of you that wear glasses and have to like try to wear masks at halloween it's like the same thing that you go through when you do vr it's like they get fogged up you can't really see anything it just kind of sucks so i'm 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 trying to maintain i'm gonna take it off here in a second though i can't you I look great man. So much. You, you sound pretty good through it too i'm surprised hey, yeah it's, it's uh it's acoustic <laughs> we need the next tutorial here for that one. <laughs> I'm just going to start doing all my tutorials through this mask. <laughs> uh, uh, well, geez. If you're listening on the audio, um, I apologize mostly. <laughs> but we're having, well, we got some masks here. Hope you're having a, a good October. And uh, we're just waiting for some questions. We do these every once in a while. We'll hop on and do an AMA, Q&A style session for the podcast with our audience over at GSG Connect, so they're logging in. Chris, um, is everybody coming in this, the channel here? I gotta, I gotta find all the. Coming in. All right. I gotta um, take this mask off, guys. Sorry. Do it. Well, some quick, quick housekeeping before we get started with the Q and A, oh. and to let kind of let everybody come in. Oh, you look good. Um, we, if you haven't listened to last week's podcast, we went uh, a little. A lot off the rails last week. Um, and by that, I mean it was a topic that really took us in a lot of weird directions, new directions, got us talking about some things we usually don't talk about here on the podcast. But we got a huge um, a bunch of comments, positive comments that said that it was, you know, fun to listen to, that really opened their eyes about some things. So definitely check out last week's podcast. If you haven't checked that one out yet, as soon as you're done listening to this one, head on over there uh, and check that one out. And uh, what else is going on? We launched the um, Gorilla Guide to X Particles not too long ago, and that's been getting awesome reviews as well. Um, hundreds of artists have bought this and are currently watching it, and we're getting reviews uh, almost every day now of people that are really digging it. They love how John's uh, teaching and uh, are getting a lot out of this. So definitely check that out as well. And we're going to have some X Particles software news uh, coming in November. So stay tuned for that. If you're a fan of X-Particles, uh, definitely stay tuned in, in November for some X-Particles news. So um, with that, uh, I think that's the general housekeeping. 
it's a little, it's kind of a crazy uh, episode here with all the questions coming in. Uh, any, anything else to kind of follow up with before we jump into the Q&A today? Um, happy Halloween again. Uh, Halloween. I'm excited about that. Um, so there'll be lots of trick-or-treaters coming by the house today, which I'm always excited about. And yeah, big, big um, thumbs up on the Gorilla Guide to X Particles. John just killed it on that product. Heck yeah. Uh, of, all right, I'm finding the right chat room here. Uh, am I typing in the right one? It's in, uh, we've got it over there. Yeah, I threw it. I threw it. I threw it to you in in the Slack. Um, there's like a a pop out. Oh, I see. It's like a YouTube uh, hangout. Yo! Oh, here we go. We got Amador's in here. What's up, Billy? Trevor? Cheers. Yo, LP. What's up? Thanks for coming by, Michael. Raid Zero's here. Cheers. I, I met Raid Zero at Half Res this year. That was cool. Tobias. Um, Lucas, of course. We got so many good people in here. Look Lucas at this. Rockin' Mark. Tokyo Megaplex or regular. Billy. Mark, uh, Mark, Mark's, uh, Mark's the one who brought Tokyo. us beer. Dude, can you believe that? He's the man. Dave Glanz, good to see you. Everyone's rolling in. Everybody get your question. Everybody get your questions ready. We're recording this live here. And um, go ahead and put your questions in and do us a favor and do Chris a favor. Everybody that's looking at questions, if you guys could put a Q and a colon and try to like standardize that. Q colon and then... Um, uh, put up a question that'll help us kind of dis differentiate between people asking questions and having conversations. Um, so make sure you ask that. Oh, question is fine as well. Michael's got one coming up. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we're we're ready to to roll in. Uh, what do you guys What do you guys think? Should we let's uh, do it? Yeah, man, we got a lot of, so many good people in here. Amador's in here. Wow, what's up, buddy? Um, yeah, let's like. Uh, okay, here we got one already. Chris, are you gonna? You want to be the question? Yeah, I've, I've been uh, putting all the uh, questions in the list here, so I'm keeping an extra eye on the chat here. But the first one is a nice softball from Lucas, and he's asking if we record our audio separately and then sync it after the fact. And Chad, you were in charge of that for a while, right? So I guess yeah, you I'm not that it. fancy, not that fancy at all. Well, we used I, to be. We we used to be a lot fancier. We used to record the podcast using a peer because that's just what we used for our meetings, our like Monday morning meetings. And that's really kind of how the podcast even got started. It's like we decided, hey, we always have these really long conversations after our Monday morning meetings. Why don't we record these and turn them into the podcast? So we used a peer in, which is kind of this free video chat thing that kind of worked with Slack. So we would just screenshot that and then we'd all send our audio uh, in or if, if someone was lucky enough to have like a good audio, I think Nick had the best audio. So he would send in his recording of the entire podcast and then I'd have to put it together and it was kind of a pain. It took a long time. So what we decided to do is use Google Hangouts because Google Hangouts makes it easy. We can just record and it posts to YouTube for us and kind of edits our faces together. Whenever somebody talks, they take control. Show us how that works, Nick. Oh, hey, everybody. Now I'm talking and Google will edit this for us. <laughs> there you, it's that easy, folks. Um, yeah, so it's definitely really simplified. It, yeah, it's just kind of simplifies the process, makes it easier for us to like just kind of jump in, do a podcast, then go back to work and, and keep you know, our we used, cranking. we used to edit it, like Chad was saying, if you remember the episodes where all three of our heads were next to each other, those were all handmade. Uh, we would record each of our screens, hand make those, and then and make sure the audio is all synced up. Um, but for the uh, for the most part, uh, it, and this has been a battle with, you know, online video and Grayscale Gorilla for over eight nine years now. The battle is always between simplifying the process so that it's really easy to come in and record these things, and making it kind of like higher uh, like production value. And to me, it's always trying to find that balance is what I've been trying to do at Grayscale Gorilla forever, right? Like early, early tutorials and not, not even early tutorials. Most tutorials were hit record and use a piece of software that recorded my face and my screen at the same time. So I could just do it all at once. Not a lot of post editing and processing. And what that would do is allow my brain to say, let's do more of these. And, and instead of like, oh gosh, every time I make a video, we have to super edit it and make sure everything's all perfect. And as soon as you, as soon as I removed some of those barriers, we ended up doing more tutorials and more videos. And so that's, that's why we're using Hangouts now. It's a lot easier, like Chad said, to just post it, get it out. It allows us to just come in here, 
answer some questions and not have to worry so much about post-processing. Um, that's changing a little bit over the years. We, we now have uh, editing help that that allows us to be a little bit higher end as far as production value. And we've been kind of experimenting with that, but just wanted to talk a little bit about the why we make those decisions kind of thing. I know a lot of you loved the appear style podcast, but man, that just took way too long to make. And uh, I'd rather keep this going once a week than have something that fizzles out because of how much work it is. And if you've ever tried to start a project, Man, I'm really taking this all the way around. If you guys out there listening have ever tried to start a project like that and have and have like really went all out on the first three episodes and then burnt out, it might be because of that that mental idea that as soon as you're done recording this, wow, you got to go do all these things. So anyway, just a little bit of behind the scenes of like how we try to make some of these decisions. Definitely. I, I've got a uh, two-parter question set up here or uh, two different people. So uh, Dave Glanz is asking, so what's up with X particles? Followed by Michael asking, what is your favorite feature in the upcoming X particles for? So I know you guys were kind of talking about some of this lately anyway. So good double setup there. Nice job. Nice job. Nice work. You want to uh, go first? Uh, me? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, X, I got a demo of for kind of where it was. Um, back at NAB, in fact, way back. Um, that's from John, who's who did our um, uh, Gorilla Guide X Particles training, and you know, as it, that wasn't a, a locked version or anything, it, they were still figuring out what's going to be in the final. But to me, uh, the thing I was most excited excited about was the cloth stuff. So they have these really this really cool cloth style engine that works on high density particles, and it just it it's it's going to create a new visual way to use X particles that doesn't look like X particles, right? Uh, so that's that's those are the things that I'm excited about is when there's a piece of new technology that looks completely different, and then see what the audience and see what our customers and what X particle users make from it. So that's probably my favorite one. Um, Chad, you got, you got a favorite? I, yeah, I gotta say I'm really digging the XP circle packer and the XP cell auto, just the circle packer. I just love because I about it, that it's something that I've seen people do and Houdini and I've always been kind of jealous of really good circle packing. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what that is, it's basically a really organic way to pack spheres or pack circular objects that looks very natural where you've got um, large ones, tiny ones, and they're not just kind of jumbled in there. They look very organic. And then the cell auto is like this really cool, almost like, like a life form kind of growth, like a cellular life kind of like almost like if you took a time lapse of roots growing that's kind of what that looks like and i can't can't wait to see what people make with that stuff i think it's great and the circle packer i'm just excited about for doing like beverage like product shots for doing sweat and stuff like that i think that'll be perfect for that oh yeah i didn't even think about it for that application it just always looks cool it's a neat pattern yeah it is cool but uh, yeah there's, for me, there's it's, a lot of stuff for me it's probably the flow fields like i just really love that new type of fluid like Big, I, I, I can't even get technical into it because I haven't actually been behind it yet. But, but I'm just gonna say flow fields and keep it simple. Flow fields. Yeah, and look for look for some news coming soon from Grayscale Girl about XP4, about all that fun stuff. Um, it, November's gonna be big for that. So if you've been looking at the upgrade, you've been you've been waiting, definitely check Grayscale Gorilla starting November. We want we want you there to check all this out. We we have some videos coming up soon to show some of these new features as well, and uh, yeah, it's exciting. Been a while since it's been a brand new version of X particles. Yeah, it's I'm, a big one. I'm pumped. Um, Man, the stuff we saw months ago was crazy, and they've been just still working ever since then. Yep, it's gonna be big. We've got lots of questions stacking up here. All right. Okay. Let's hit us. Us. So, yeah, let's let's keep hitting them relatively quickly. Quickly. So we got uh, a question from Raid Zero, which is a nice, straightforward one. We'll have to try and keep it short. But uh -oh. it's what are you working on? So oh, we got to keep that stuff limited. I'm going to start with that one. I'm going to keep it really limited. But we're working. We're always working on new plugins and projects over here. So we're getting really close to getting a plugin into beta. And you never know how long it will be until it's real from that point. But we are like cranking away, and I'm super excited to get it into the next stage. And it's just a super, super fun plugin we're working on. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'll I, I second that. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, that I've been working on that too, and also lots of other stuff that's going to be coming out and uh, tutorials that I'm working on for Redshift and Arnold and um, something a project that hopefully that Chris and I worked on together that we're hopefully going to put out into the world soon. Oh yeah, um, you make that happen. That uh, was kind of a more of a production job that we did internally. So hopefully we'll be able to share that when it's ready. Your turn, Nick. Um, I've been <laughs> my 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 world's come all the way full circle. I've been playing in After Effects recently. It's been kind of a, a weird experiment for me. Uh, After Effects has been adding so many 3D tools over the last uh, five six years, starting with Cineware, and um, then they added Cinema 4D rendering directly in After Effects, where you don't even have to open uh, Cinema. You could just extrude type and all that stuff. So I've been experimenting. Uh, in After Effects to see kind of just what's possible. And for me, it, it, it helps open my eyes to what everybody has access to. Just so many people have access to After Effects and Photoshop and have that Creative Cloud subscription that I want I want to be able to help those people uh, transition into cinema a little bit easier. And if they already have these tools in the back of their head, um, maybe we can make that transition to 3D a little easier. That's that's the goal. That, that was the goal of doing Cinema 4D tutorials to begin with, is that that program made 3d easier for regular you know designers and not not super technical people so that's been my interest playing in after effects a lot hope to have some videos out pretty soon and uh the other thing has been uh the training so now that chad did such a great training uh chad did such a great job getting x particles training out and into a format that honestly looked way better than the current they're the previous way that we uh, made training so now i'm trying to work with the team to, to get all of our training on this new platform so it looks that much better so don't worry you don't need a new login or anything like that like you needed before but we're looking at making all of our training series if you've bought you know um ask gsg or the animation fundamentals class working on making that experience better for the customers so that's a little behind the scenes but that's that's what we're working on very nice. Okay. And next. Next up, we'll have to see how well we can do this by talking. But Billy was asking what our favorite MoGraph related thing is that we've learned, whether on a production job or while developing a new GSG product. Hmm. MoGraph related. I'll go first real quick. MoGraph thing related. I'll go first real quick. The um, as soon as I found out that you can add randomness to the actual t- particle type. Uh, how do how do you describe this? I have a video about this, and I'm going to look it up, put it in the show notes, and I'll make sure it's there. And it's about adding randomness to your MoGraph clones. And it's not just adding randomness to each clone and moving it in different directions. It's the idea that you can basically uh, change the amount of randomness that each clone got. So, for example, if you ever wanted a bunch of clones to move forward all at different times, and you didn't want to animate each one separately, you could tell, you could just animate one uh, parameter, like moving forward, and then preload randomness into that clone. And then it kind of acts like a smart particle where where it says, okay, I'm going to do that move that you told me to, but I'm going to do it at a different time than my neighbors. So yeah, you're right, Chris. This is hard to do (laughs) talking through it, but I'm going to put the video in there because it's a quick five, uh, maybe 10 minute video on how to get this going, and it's changed the way that I look at MoGraph. Oh, wait, was it MoGraph as in just like motion graphics, or was it MoGraph as in the MoGraph module? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's that specific. Your MoGraph-related thing you've learned. So I oh, think I think you can do it either module. way. Yeah, either way. Oh, because my brain was like, I was trying to understand, like, wow, that's a really specific thing <laughs> in MoGraph to like point out. But I was like, hey, man, you do you. Um, uh, I, I, my thing was like a little bit more broad, I guess it was more like, I thought he meant like MoGraph as in like motion graphics or motion design or whatever. And I think my breakthrough is probably when I figured out that, um, I could use compositing to fix problems that I normally would have went back and re-rendered a bunch of frames for. And once I kind of figured that out and realized that, wow, so this is all just cheating and this is all just like a bunch of 
cheating and that's what effects is and there, there's no shame in that that's actually a good thing and once i learned that and i it kind of opened up my mind into not trying to do everything so physical and so like like in the app real and trying to do more fakery and like once that gateway was opened i was like it was liberating so that was for me the the big thing well, i'm going to go back to doing it a little bit more technical and you said mograph related so this was definitely for a MoGraph project. In fact, it was when I was working on the title sequence for Dumb and Dumber 2 that I learned something, or at least I started applying a very fundamental principle that I've started doing over and over again in doing uh, dynamic, anim uh, dynamic animations and being able to kind of art direct your dynamics, specifically soft bodies. And the main thing is when you're using the particle effectors, um, inside cinema, like the old school particle effectors, those all have fall offs. And you can go and apply those fall, or you can go and apply those effectors to individual dynamic tags if you want to. But once you make an object a soft body, every single point is getting that wind effect. So if you had, let's say, a letter sitting right there, and then you put a wind with a fall off just on the bottom points, only the bottom points will start blowing forward but that means the letter will rotate and blow in that general direction. You get tons of control there. And along those lines, you could like snap soft bodies in particular places with a lot of jiggle and you could compress them and expand them. Just so much control by combining those particle effectors with soft body dynamics. And I've done a couple tutorials along those lines. In fact, you guys should check out a Cineversity tutorial that I did a breakdown of that project. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. But I've got the questions here, so let's set up the next one. Uh-oh, it's one specifically for me. Uh, Amador is asking, uh, what is BlizzCon, and why is it worth my time? And he's asking that because he knows that I'm going to BlizzCon on Thursday. Me and my brothers are taking a little vacation, and we're heading off to Anaheim to go to the Blizzard, the computer game company, Blizzard Entertainment's big conference for the first time ever. We've been trying to go for years. But we're flying out to Anaheim on Thursday, and we're going to attend the video game conference just for fun. Uh, but it's just, a, I mean, it's a little bit all over the place. I don't know exactly what to expect, but there's a bunch of talks. There's some technical breakdowns. There's going to be new announcements as far as the games that they're working on, the new features that they're adding in, and get to meet some friends over there and, you know, just go kind of not... not a is it is it like a Comic-Con, Chris? Like, is it like in a big kind of, like, space where there's like booths and stuff or like how does that what does it look like i think it's i think in some ways it's like a comic con but i don't think there's a big show floor so much there's a couple little pods but for the most part it's like oh you're going into this room to hear about this game you go to a whole room it's a big giant screen you go into a big different giant room where they're talking about this and over here they're doing a breakdown on the cinematics and over here they're talking about the voice actors and over here so it's a whole bunch of different events and keynotes and they i think uh, muse is going to be playing a concert there what and really? Yeah, wow. they get like a big giant band every year, and uh, I'm just super blizzard. looking forward to it. It's just uh, it's a little bit tangential, so I don't I can even turn off my brain a little bit, not be thinking on the technical side. Just go and enjoy it and see what they're up to. So very cool, fun little trip, fun stuff, and it's very. a good time to go to Anaheim because like 35 degrees over here. Yeah, temperature super dropped here. Yeah, we had our first snow this morning. Yep. So get get to California while you can, Chris. Yep. Oh, well, we can wait until right, it gets even leave. colder. But uh, let's see. <laughs> we might have to be careful about, or uh, we might not be able to answer this one overly, but Neo3D is asking if we have kind of any more courses planned. It might even be in the context of, are we thinking about doing any more courses to join, more in the like the animation course that we had old school. So what are, what are your thoughts on that these days, Nick? Yeah, um, we've been, as you guys have probably seen over the last couple of years, experimenting with... Um, more robust online training through Grayscale Gorilla. And so far, so good. We've got a lot of great feedback from our Animation Fundamentals class. If you've t uh, taken that last year, we ran it as a course uh, where it was a little bit more hands-on, um, where it was a lot more like the, the teacher was there to be able to critique your work and stuff like that. Um, but the biggest feedback we got for that one was that um, was the price. Um, and honestly, as soon as you get a teacher that is coming back and critiquing and doing the live one-on-ones, there's just really no good way to do it without having it be a, a much more expensive process. Um, so for us, and and you know, maybe this is a little bit too behind the scenes, but this is what this Q&A is all about. Uh, for us, we thought, you know, a lot of our audience 
is already learning on their own. They're watching tutorials. They're learning from as much as they can from YouTube. And maybe what they really need is a place to watch uh, a full project from start to finish and a more robust project than what you could just do in a 45 minute tutorial. And maybe also what they need is a community where they can all hang out and help each other answer, answer each other's questions and be able to build that community. So that's what we've built with uh, Gorilla Guide Dax Particles. It is a really robust set of training. It's very project focused so you, that you could break things down it, over a long period of time. But then you also have this community behind the scenes where you could help each other out and ask each other's questions. So all the reason I'm describing all that is because we've kind of been running almost like experiments, like what's working, what's working for our audience, what's working for our teachers, and how can we pay our teachers properly? I'm really tired of teachers not getting paid enough. So we wanna make sure all that stuff happens. And I think we, we, I think we got it right with Gorilla Guide Dex Particles. Um, people are really uh, responding to it. It seems like the perfect way to teach online that doesn't require a ton of handholding, which like I said, can get a little expensive. So I, I think, um, I, I think mean, we're close. I think we're close. I think, I think we are. Like, it's always a moving target. We're always trying to improve it, but I feel really, I feel really good about the content and the experience is always going to be a work in progress. Yeah. That, always... to, to me, I was just having this conversation. Uh, I'll try to keep this short, but to me, when it came to online training, um, uh, the goal for me was not just to make training because anybody can go make training. Anybody can flip their camera on and show their screen and make training. The goal for Grayscale Grill and the goal for online training in general, at least from me, and the reason I have Chad and, and Chris here on the team is because they believe this too, that you have to be able to communicate through the screen into the other person's um, head and like exchange some sort of knowledge. And that is hard. It's really hard to sit across the world and say something compelling enough on the screen to let people get it, to keep it entertaining so that they continue to watch it, so that it sinks in, so that it makes sense, so that it's not too much or too little. And that's really what we've been trying to get better at at Grayscale Gorilla. And I, and like, I think you're right. I think we, if we, we, we got it. Like this Gorilla Guide Dex Particles is it's it's our ro most robust training, um, and people love it. And I I would love to do more stuff in that, like in that kind of scale. If that makes sense. Pumped, man. Training. Uh, thanks for the question, dude. Thanks for the turnout, everybody. Thanks for coming by. Let me pop up the screen, Chris. I uh, appreciate you getting all these questions together. Sure. Um, let's see. What's up, Grant? Grant showed up. Cheers, buddy. We've Tokyo. got a question from Tokyo Megaplex. Any chance we'd be willing to give some details on starting to learn Houdini? Not sure if we've gotten into it. Um, so this is a this is a bigger question, and it's actually an open question for me. And I was actually talking to you about this yesterday, Nick. That I especially have to talk to Chad. Because Chad and I were kind of uh, watching and discussing a recent Houdini breakdown video. I, I was actually sort of familiar with that video, Chad, and I can even post a link to that in the show notes. I forgot which video it was. Um, it was somebody breaking down procedural building of like a bunch of bookshelves and books. Oh, and right. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. Like this giant that procedural actually was, workflow. That was sent to me by Trevor, and he's in the, in the chat, so thanks, Trevor. I think I had seen like a different iteration of a project breakdown that she speaks about in that. But it's really put together... But the, there's, there's some danger in there, and I've been saying this for a while. I've had a lot of people come up to me and be like, you should start using Houdini. You would love Houdini. And this is people who have tinkered with it and say I would love it, and people who have never used it, but they're like, I want you to learn it so you can help me to learn it. I, I get that a lot, too. <laughs> yeah, but having watched, like that, having watched that particular video, I'm like, this is super dangerous, and I want to go just go disappear into a cave for three months. And try and learn try a bunch of years, man. Like that's like a three-year journey for yeah, me. But, it would well, be anyway. I, yeah. Well, and even that, I don't know how deep it would take to go into that. But that's such an undertaking, and it takes so much time. And even that, I, I tend to not be overly confident in teaching something unless I know it kind of inside and out. And, and especially since my teaching style, I think all of our teaching style is we're doing this because of this reason. If you don't know something really well you can't tell people why you're doing it you're really just tinkering and if something happens to work you're like okay cool i don't know why it worked but we're going to keep going forward right right i think and, yeah, that would be not a good way to do it yeah so you know, I you know what i would that. like to see man i'm thinking out loud but what if we found somebody that really was great at houdini and 
recorded you watching them and asking them all the Chris awesome questions that you would ask them and go like, okay, you're the, you, you know so much about Cinema 4D and you would ask some pretty insightful questions about Houdini because you want to translate it through your lens of, of cinema, right? So, so maybe we grab somebody that's really great at it, bring him in, and he can kind of teach whoever wants to, including yeah. you. But then once we record it, including anybody that can watch along with you. Yeah. There's something it, there. Yeah, there's yeah, something there. I, mean, I kind of did that with Arnold that one time when I was showing you guys through that. Like something like that would be interesting. Yeah, mm. I, there's so many open questions there. Like I've even sort of thought about popping it open. It's like, okay, I've, I've got a copy of Houdini we're playing with. I'm going to open up and start live streaming. Like I've never clicked a button. Let's start tinkering. So break it. Like, yeah, just break everything. So I don't, I don't know. We got to figure out what the approach. That to video that was fascinating though, to like watch her process and, and just the, the, the way that she approached some of these projects and these problems is really interesting to me. Yes. I know and, the thought, but everything she's talking about, that that's the way my brain works. It's like, Oh, that'd be so cool to do it that way. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so much procedural wild. stuff going on and uh, everybody everybody who's watching or listening to this knows how obsessed i am with procedural oh my god we'll never see we'll never see him again that's the, like, that's a danger i've got too many other things to do and i would just <laughs> that'll be the some... end of grayscale gorilla this big <laughs> beard chris has a giant beard and he's like what do you want and no more cinema yeah what no who yeah, did way better but we uh, can't make plugins <laughs> uh, uh let's see nc17 was asking, uh, I guess this might be a Chad S question. They're asking about the GSG grunge maps that you've mentioned before. What's the plan? Where are we at with that? Or is that secret information? Uh, well, it's not really secret. I've talked about it before. I have a, um, a secret library of my own grunge maps that will someday make their way out into our, our marketplace. Um, so yeah, they exist. They're, uh, I've been using them for years, and I think that they're going to make their way out into our into our product line, either through a material pack product, maybe, or maybe on their own. But it's kind of ambiguous right now. We're still we've got so many things kind of uh, that we need to work on and get out that it's not a top priority. It's a priority, but it's not like the next thing that we're doing. So hold tight; they'll they'll be out there. At some point, and, and you say it's not priority, but I'm going to tease them a little bit further. Which is every time you're doing something fun and exciting in any of the third-party renders, you're like, "Look, I layered up a couple of my grunge maps. Look what I made!" It's like <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're like the secret. They're like the secret sauce, man. Like if you if you can master imperfection, um, then you can create really compelling images, and that's really all we do and you know it's really easy to make perfection it's really hard to make imperfection because nature is just naturally nature is naturally just imperfect um so i didn't mean to rhyme in a, such a corny ass way but there you That's go beautiful it's thank beautiful. you thank you uh, i'll be here for the next 20 minutes um so yeah the uh if you can kind of figure out how to use imperfection and grunge maps in your work, uh, then I think you end up with more realistic stuff. Even if you're doing the most perfect product render for Pepsi or something like that, even the most perfect product render needs to have a little bit of imperfection in there. Otherwise, it just feels very cold and CG. So yeah, someday those will be out, and I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot of teaser images as the as we ramp up into that. Let's see. Next question from Trevor Kerr. Uh, is C4D your native application? If not, what do you find is the greatest strength and or weakness compared against the other competing softwares? And I'm going to pretty much, I, I'm going to skip that one because I've only used Cinema 4D. Yeah, Chris, you're going to skip that one? Well, Chris, no, no, I'm going to skip it for myself. Uh, this is entirely for you guys to answer. Chris, is it's like a strong yes from you, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Uh, what, what, what do I say? What do I say? I say, I'll say this. When I started Cinema 4D back, geez, uh, started playing with it in 2003, 2002, and it was always anything I could do to get out of that application and into After Effects because I knew After Effects, I knew how to composite, I knew how to make things look good, and the goal with Cinema 4D was to create 
things with round edges, which you couldn't make in After Effects, and get it the heck inside After Effects. Uh, so for years, that was how I viewed cinema. It was a way to get more robust 3D into a program like After Effects so that I could do all the stuff that I honestly am way more comfortable in. And so I mentioned earlier in the podcast, I've been kind of jumping back into After Effects. I'm realizing really like how much how much of that muscle memory and how much of the stuff I've actually remembered that that is very comfortable. It's very easy to add, you know, filters. I, I, I kind of I'm a little bit miss that world where I could just add glows and effects and tweak little things to make it a little bit better each each time. And uh, so for me, I would say it's either cinema or after effects, but uh, the 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 ability to do 3D inside of After Effects was what originally got me into cinema. So I don't know if that really answers the question, but um, I have a feeling, Trevor, you're probably looking for a like, I really think that he's looking for Chad's big he's answer. Looking Chad, he's looking for, for sure. Chad's big answer because Chad's played with all these dang 3D applications. And what where, where are you sitting with all this stuff? These I have been using nothing but Lightwave. No, I'm just kidding. That's the one I haven't actually used. Um, so started <laughs> off using way, 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 way back um, Soft Image, then Maya, then a little bit of XSI, then 3ds Max for a really long time, and now here I am in Cinema 4D. And I would say that Cinema 4D is my my everyday. It used to be 3ds Max, um, but I do spend a significant amount of time in Substance Designer, which I wouldn't really say is a 3D program, but it's the other program that I spend a lot of my time in. Um, and then, obviously, um, Houdini is on my list of things that I want to learn. I just don't have the time right now to dedicate to learning it. And I really don't feel that super confident in cinema yet. I've only been using it for a couple of years now. So I feel like I still have a lot to learn on that front before I can really dive into the next thing. But... I would say that um, don't be afraid to use whatever it is that's going to get your job done and whatever is going to get you the best results for what you're doing. I remember when I was at DK, we had a job where 3ds Max wasn't going to cut it. It wasn't going to be able to do what we needed to do. So we knew that XSI would. So we got a license of XSI and we started to learn what we needed to learn for that particular job. We didn't have to master the program. We just needed to learn the one aspect of it that we needed for this job knowing full well that we could always go back and learn more and about the other aspects of the software if we needed to. But we need to learn what we need to get the job done. And that's really the main, was always my main motivation. It was never, I'm going to master this software before I do anything in it. I'm, I need to learn every button before I can do a job. No, oftentimes, like, you're just cracking it open to do that one thing, get it out, and get the job done. So that's really kind of how I approach programs and rendering too like i i typically i typically will just use whichever one is going to work particularly well for that specific task if that makes sense hope yeah. that answered the question that's what i see just f from from my side that's what i see the the longer anybody's in the the industry and especially working and working with clients is is they're less concerned about what tools hang on the wall. They just want to make sure that they know the right one when the right job comes in. And then they'll reach for that tool because it fits with what they're doing. It maybe that Houdini thing comes to mind. The After Effects thing definitely comes to mind. You know, if if uh I know I know people that know cinema, they know Max, they know um well geez Amador's in the in the in the the group here too. And he knows many different 3D programs and he'll specifically pick the one that will will like dial in for that client at the perfect time and so um that's how i yeah i think that's uh, basically i agree i agree it's, it's the that's golfer metaphor you know like you have your bag of clubs and you get to the hole and you figure out well what do i need here do i need you know a driver i'm terrible at golf i, I never play so i'm this metaphor is probably going to backfire on me but Somebody kinda, needs to do the weird analogy. This, yeah, this I know. Week. I'm like, I got somebody's got to work in the metaphor. I guess I'll do it. And yeah, so if you have all of these different, if you only have one club in your in your bag, then you're only going to be able to do one kind of shot. So it's always good to learn more and add more clubs to your bag and tools to your toolbox or whatever silly metaphor you want to use. But 
Oh, that's a good way to put it because then you, I think what it allows you to do is it's, it allows you to say yes to more clients because you, you know the limitations of what your current toolbox can do. And it also, it, it also, by the way, helps to have friends that know other things that you don't, right? So if you get the right job in, you're like, oh, okay, well, this needs a lot of modeling. I'm bad at it, but I'm still going to say yes to this gig because I know the perfect person to work with. And so if you start to look at that, if you start to look at it in that way, on um, what are the, what are the, what are the clubs in your bag? And also what, what clubs can you like pay to, to use from other people too, to really help get that job done even faster and more along the lines of what the client's looking for. Think of it that way, other than just what is right for you, because what's right for you may how do you how do you put this if you only think of learning what you want to do at all times you might be really good at making abstract sphere renders pointing at myself right now and not good enough at making like a really good looking uh product shot with like you know scratches and sweat and stuff all over it like chad could be able to do right so th think of it that way what what kind of uh, golf clubs are in your bag and what can you learn tomorrow to add another club in that's good see that that's when i sound really smart chad when i just take your really good analogy <laughs> thanks for just re restating my analogy <laughs> and then just re restate it you know that's really what i'm uh the best at just uh just taking credit really thanks man so thanks man i don't know i appreciate it <laughs> we got a quick one here for chad another one from raid zero is that twitch hoodie now fused to your body it is my most comfortable hoodie and yes, I believe it is like surgically starting to like form into my skin. I don't know what it is about this hoodie, but like I have like another, I have some H&M hoodies that are just like kind of after a few washes, they get really kind of stiff. And this one has maintained its softness, even though I lost the string with such I'm kind of bummed about, but it's maintained a level of comfort and softness that I just, it's my every day. I should probably wash it. It's probably why it's not <laughs> stiff. It's like I never <laughs> You've never watched yeah. it. You've never taken yeah. it off. So. The other thing, like while we're talking about my favorite things, I'm just going to take a moment here to plug my favorite coffee cup of all time. And it's if, you, if you're into coffee like Nick and I are, uh, you hate cold coffee, insulated coffee mug, dope, dope thing. Really one of my favorite new things I bought. It's my yeah. other thing I should probably wash, but I never do. <laughs> uh, we're really learning a lot about each other today. <laughs> That's like my one. <laughs> like overshare. This needs a wash. Let me tell you. I know. Like, it, it's like, ah, it's just me. I'm using it every day. What's, what's like, just rinse it. It's probably yeah, what's fine. The it's not, it's not like, oh, let's not talk about hands. Hands is, are the worst. Is uh, that cup ceramic or metal, Chad? It's a uh, stainless steel and it's made by a company called Mir, M I I R. And it's the regular size, like a regular size coffee cup, but it's got this nice lid. You can, you don't have to use the lid if you don't want to. You can take it off. And it keeps your coffee hot, like for a really long time. And I've used like, I use like tall ones for my water, but for coffee, like unless you're driving, like I don't like using these types. I like like a nice stout kind of short coffee, traditional coffee cup. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of everything matte black. So if you, if you, for those of you who know me, I'm a huge matte black kind of like uh, everything on my desk is matte black. So it was kind of a no brainer for me to pick that up. Looking good. I talk all show day notes. About random crap in the show notes um oh, yeah, yeah it, it, if you uh want to see all these show notes i got links to tutorials we've got links to coffee mugs we got links to uh chris's soft body uh, uh, uh video from where was that from it Number was a oh, from like two years ago yeah so check it out um if you're uh if you want to see these show notes if you're watching here on youtube it's going to be down in the description we'll link all this up and if you're listening on itunes um, you can go usually on most uh, podcast apps. You could swipe over and get all the uh, links right there, right there in your your app. So, oh man, I just saw uh, people's in the house now. Oh oh oh! oh. Who let him it's in? gonna get crazy now. Who oh. who snuck him a link? Boy, oh boy! What's up, Mike? Good to see you, man. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> he says I look sexy. I'm oh. assuming he means me. I'm the only bald guy. I appreciate it. That's nice. Mike is a man. Um, well, let's see here. We got uh, about 10 minutes left. Okay, we got, I got uh, a couple more questions here. Got some more questions. Uh, do we have any plans to do additional model kits along the lines of the Happy Toolbox? 
Good we question. love the Happy Toolbox model kit. If you haven't seen that thing, go check it out. They're addictive models. In fact, I'll be using them in my Redshift stream tomorrow. Um, but I'll answer that one, I guess. Um, the answer is yes. We hope to have more models by the Happy Toolbox soon. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's uh. It's been fun to to bring this to the to our uh, to our store. We've never really sold models like that before, and uh, it's it. I, I just love the style of these things. We've been already getting some really cool renders back from you guys. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, put it on your radar. It's one of those things. It's like City Kit, where you're like, well, do I need that right now? You might not. You might not have that perfect job where you need it. But when you have that job, when you need to like fill in your background, like put other objects around that have all the same style like you're to know it's ready and here for you is is really what i'm trying to do i want you to know that it's here because when you need it it'll be super helpful um i'll put a link in there for two, this, is our, this is killing it show notes today i'm just typing like crazy yeah that's that's what we get for these uh amas yeah well, thanks for all the questions everybody whenever um, anybody says ama i'm always thinking it's like american movie awards or something Oh yeah, you don't spend enough time on Reddit then. I guess I guess I don't. I'm not a big Reddit dude. Another question from Dave Glanz: uh, Does anyone have an external GPU case that holds more than one GPU? I know somebody who has one that never uses it. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's probably still collecting dust behind him. It's like right back there, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah I moved it off I to the floor. You, the next time I go to your house and that's not plugged in, I'm stealing it. Right, and that's why I haven't invited you over. <laughs> <laughs> I might just have to come over uninvited then. Dude. Officially uninvited. Yep. Um uh I I've, I've looked into them. I uh man, I don't I don't want to bring it up again, but I kind of do. It, all signs are pointing towards um uh, a PC for Nick before the end of the year. Before the end of the year. Wow, that's really relatively soon. Yeah. Yeah. Is that going to be like a Christmas present you tell in Telling your folks, you're like, all right, I'm going with PC. <laughs> I'm telling Surprise you, me. if you want to know which one to get, you're going to want to get a compact. Compact? Are, they're coming back. Yep. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I was thinking about grabbing the Dell and uh, just going Dell, for it. Dell's still around. They're still good. They I would say, what's the other one um, with the cow print? Oh, yeah. Uh, CompuSafe, sorry, I don't know. It was, sorry, a, this. it was a G, right? Wasn't it a G? Oh, Gateway. Gateway. Yeah. That what Gateway a weird... cow print. Yeah. Remember those, dude? dude? That's what you should tell people you're gonna get. Dude, we're old. Yo, I'm uh getting a Dell. Uh, I just let's see. Dude, here. I'm getting a Dell. Getting it handy. Oh, dude, 000. I'm getting a Dell. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the worst. Didn't that guy like go on to commit some crimes? I think as soon as you're a spokesmodel for anybody, that you it's kind of part of your contract that. But what you do is you come out as a spokesperson. You're you're like a positive role model spokesperson. And then toward the end of your contract, when you people kind of forget about you, you go do something awful. And then that and then they make a big deal by firing you, which gives the company like a little bit of extra credit. Mm, right? no, any publicity is good. Yeah, yeah, any publicity is good. So I think it's just part of being like a big figure in uh, I think they just write it right into the contract. Like, thanks for being so great. Now it's time to go be an awful person and get caught. So I think that's wow. probably what they did for uh, for the Dell guy. Just wrote it right in the contract. I, I'm um, just waiting for the guy who does the "Can you hear me now?" Like for that to happen to him. Although uh, switched. no, he switched though. I forgot. He did the that. switch. Remember he that that was uh the like oh I I switched to Sprint now uh joke, which was good. That's a good joke. Yeah. I what about Flo? Do you think she's gonna get out of this unscathed? Yeah, you know the cavemen made it out. I think the gecko will make it out. Um, and then the flow. I think the triangle guitar guy, the triangle um uh guitar solo's got some legs i think that character will be around for a while Flo, yeah she's been around for a I while don't, i don't see Flo as like the type that's gonna commit any sort of crime she'll just Although, fade out into the distance yeah no she'll go forever she's gonna yeah. outlive us all she probably will <laughs> the hologram make her into a hologram oh my gosh all right we got a question from zachary chad yes is redshift more viable for photorealism than octane um, I get that question a lot and really, you know, it's not about, well, it is about the tool, but it isn't about the tool. So like 
right about now, you can pick about just about any renderer that's commercially available and make it look photoreal if you have the, the skills to do so. So I could take um, physical and make it pretty damn real. Um, it's just all about the kind of work that you do. It's not about its ability to generate photo real quality results more than another ones. It's about what is it going to do for you and your workflow? Does it, is it going to help you get your job done faster, better? Uh, so it's, it's really, the question doesn't really make, it's not the kind of question that should be asked. You should be asking, does it work well for what I do? Is it going to be the best thing for my work? And without knowing the kind of work you do, it's hard to say, but um, they can all do photo reel now. It's it's just a matter of how quick and how easy it is. And they all have different levels of that too. So it just all kind of depends on the kind of work you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That You know what? That's the second time you said that. And I think that's always a good way to think of it. Make sure that you're looking at it from your customers uh, and, your, and your work and the work you like doing too. Right. And so that's a good point too. So I use a lot of Redshift and Arnold and people always ask me, well, what do you like better? And it's like, really, honestly, Arnold is is slower because it's CPU based, but that'll change soon, hopefully. Um, but it's just more fun for me to use because the tools are more robust. So I have more fun doing shaders in Arnold than I do in Redshift right now. Um, that could change in a year, who knows? And I'm open to it because you have to be, you have to always be looking at what's coming out and what's gonna do help you do your job better. Um, so, yeah. So we. How much time we got left? What are we, what are we aiming for here? Uh, I gotta take off here pretty soon, uh, five, five minutes. All right, then let's do this one quick and then we'll end on a nice uh, essay question. So Jake is asking, how do you scope a 3D animation project? Oh, Oof. that nice, that nice short question. Yeah. <laughs> do it quick. You got one minute, Chad. <laughs> oh man. Uh, okay. How do I uh, scope it? So the client, I, I'm the client. You need a product shot. We need um a like a, a what do they call those end shots? I learned the word and then I forgot it. Pack you shot. Sounds just like a client. <laughs> yeah. So I need a pack He's shot. The client. I need a pack shot of our three of our products and then a fourth one with all three of them together and they're okay. all in this style and they're all five seconds long and I need them in uh, two months. Two months, wow, that's a really, that's a long time. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna push it up to a month because probably two days. Two days. probably people are bugging for quicker, better than longer. So, okay, scope, how do you well, go are we, that brain process? Okay, are we single bid? Am I the only company you're talking to? No, we're talking to other people. Okay, so when do you want our uh, our pitch? When do you want us to present our take on your end tag? Three days. Okay, perfect. So that right there, um, you got to find out the you got to find out the deets. You got to know when this. When do you need to present the ideas? How many ideas you think you're going to need? What sort of? Uh, I would ask Nick a lot more questions than we have time to get into right now. Uh, I would have the producer go through some back channels to kind of figure out what the budget might be like. Uh, if we're talking, you know, a, a lot of money, really complex stuff, or if it's simple, quick stuff. Uh, then we go off and make make our our basically we put together a bid and the pitch deck at the same time, and the bid might cover as much as information as we have at that point. Um, it might also break down what each idea we might do like three different creative d directions on the Zen tag one simple one medium one complex so we'd have a bid that would cover all three of those different kind of trajectories so that way when we're when we have our meeting and I go to Nick and I say all right our first idea is really simple we're just going to keep it really clean and, and beautiful and minimal and the products are going to fly in and rest and we're going to have a really beautiful type and that's how it's going to go the second one we're going to amp it up a little bit. It's going to have a little dynamics. going to have a little bit of uh, light flares or something going on. And then this last one is kind of we blew it out. We just wanted to see what you thought, you know, just get in front of you, make sure that you know that we want to do something really cool with this. So this like crazy idea with liquid flying around and it forms the product and then the whole thing dissipates. So those are our three directions that we would put in front of the client. We'd have a, a fully kind of bid out. And then uh, hopefully Nick would go off and look at the other company's bids and kind of decide on which direction he thought was best. And hopefully he thought it was us. 
and he, hopefully he would call and say, yeah, we like the middle one. And then from there we, with the producer, I don't have much experience with this. I think probably a lot more individual artists or studio owners would have more experience with this, like drawing up scope of work contracts, uh, things of that nature. And then I would go off with the team, the 3D team, and start to plan out the project. Now it's way too much to get into on a podcast, but start to divvy out what exactly we're doing, start to work on the, pre the previs, educating the client on the process, all the stuff that, you know, goes into it that is really hard to get out before Nick has to bail at 12. So uh, I hope that was like a really fast Cliff Notes yeah. version, but well, then we're, we're, all of the work in between uh, and postings getting, and schedules. And we're getting craziness. several requests to do an entire episode based on that topic. So let's keep just keep that in mind for the future. Cool. Or write that write that down. I was gonna uh, I suggest did. the same thing. Oh, Chris is on top of it. All right, we got uh we got one last big um uh question here, Chris. You got yeah, one? Yeah, we got a nice kind of existential one from okay, Lucas. Before before we do a fast uh, takeoff, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody that uh, came up into the into the live chat ask these questions and if you're listening to this later don't forget if you're a customer of ours you've purchased anything from grayscale gorilla you can have access to this uh behind the scenes slack channel just log into your account at grayscale gorilla and you can uh, be here when we do these live shows we we put out uh, uh uh the link on the slack and everything so definitely check that out i know a lot of our customers that have been around a while don't know that this exists and we just uh, wanted to take a second to make sure everybody knows. Come on and say hi in the Slack. And thanks to everybody that uh, asked questions. So, okay, go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Okay, so question from Lucas. How do you overcome... Uh, how did you overcome a time when you felt like you were downward spiraling in a project when you really felt like you weren't doing your best? Hmm. Hmm. Way to end on a happy note. <laughs> well, no, this is how you got out of it. Oh, I see. You got it. Uh, okay. Gotta... So getting out of that. I, um, yeah, I could think of a few projects. Taking a break, big one. Go do something you like. Go do something fun. Get away. Um, sometimes when you're in the spiral, just if you try to fight through it, it's just going to get more spirally and more sad and more of a bummer. If you're trying to do that thing and you're trying to make it look the way that you want and you just can't do it fighting it is often uh t for me at least the worst thing you could do um and uh some of the other things you could do are like make a damn decision like make a damn decision and move forward with it and start on some other part of the project and then maybe potentially go back and revisit it but um having too many options can give me that feeling and so just going in one direction very quickly uh, gets me out of that mode. Um, I'm just kind of riffing, guys. What, what do you think? I, I, would, I, I think that um, fresh perspective is a huge help, whether it's bringing somebody else in to look at it or having somebody else join the project or take a piece of the project. But fresh perspective is always a good thing to bring in because it, it allows you to kind of take a step out of it and stop that tunnel vision effect that can lead you down that spiraling path like getting somebody else to look at it open up a scene like or even just sometimes what i would do is just show it to somebody that's got nothing to do with the project and just get their eyes on it and and see what they thought the other thing that i'll say is um uh don't be afraid to start over um i what I'll do sometimes if I'm even in the middle of something, if I don't feel like it's going my way, I'll just start over and I, I'll force myself to approach it a different way. And usually it'll be faster to get to the end result and I will have done it in a better kind of smarter way. Um, but starting over sometimes is is a scary thing and a lot of producers don't like to hear that if you say well i'm going to start this over they're like freak out but if you say well i'm going to i'm going to come at it from a better way i'll be at the same place i was yesterday don't worry just give me a chance to start this over so those are my two things yeah i i just would pretty much echo you guys i don't think i've ever been too far down that that type of pit because i haven't done nearly as much production work and i think a lot of times it could just turn into like we gotta we gotta finish this up to the point where the client is happy with it like we're not going to be happy with it but the client will be happy and then even along those lines it, you can get into your own head and start thinking of it a certain way and as soon as somebody else it could even be the client they look at it, they're like oh i love it and you're like wait we haven't even rendered it yet 
but <laughs> uh, but the uh, but yeah, you, just because you feel a particular way about it, it doesn't mean that's what everybody else feels about it. So getting that alternative view is just a really really good idea. And yeah, starting over can be huge. And somebody else's eyeballs. As soon as you show somebody else something, you automatically see it through new eyes, as well. So you know, maybe it wasn't as bad as you thought. Mm hmm. Go for a walk. Yeah, show it to somebody else. Uh, these are good. We need a list. Maybe like a bunch of flashcards that you pull out when you're really feeling sad, and you can like pull a card out and go do one of these things. I feel like that exists. I feel like that's another idea I stole from something. Where where did I see those? Like little um, motivational play cards. Mm. Uh, like hang in there, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like the frog choking the um the uh the bird when it's in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. We got to put that in the show notes. We got to find that. <laughs> Is that our? Did we find our cover? We found oh, our YouTube. Dude, cover? We got to find that for sure. <laughs> the, uh, trying to kill the pelican all right um i got <laughs> i gotta run that was fun um uh the the people are saying we should do more of these more of these live shows which i appreciate thanks uh thanks for coming by everybody thanks for all the questions and um uh and definitely check out last week's episode that was a fun one i really liked last week's it's one of my favorite me too me too we got to talk about some really fun stuff and uh, happy halloween everybody happy halloween uh Ooh. we'll wrap it up uh saying um you know go for a walk now uh, especially if you live in the uh in the colder climates the snow is coming the freezing cold is coming uh get out while you can get that vitamin d and uh thank you so much for listening to the great scale gorilla podcast gotta end it on a vitamin note <laughs> <laughs> bye everybody bye bye <laughs>